Hey guys, welcome to the Nature Warriors. I'm Jake Fink. And I'm Paul Falsoni. And we're your hosts of Mother Nature's Warriors. Absolutely. Every month, go to MotherToWarriors.com. We'll be highlighting a people, organizations, and business, people making an effort to work towards a more, more sustainable earth. That's what we're doing here. So we're hanging out here in this nice new development. And what is that right behind you? It looks like a small mountain. Oh, that is not a small amount, my man. This is a landfill back there. This thing is enormous. You know that some of the landfills in New York you can actually see from outer space. It's crazy. Yeah, that is. And if you live like most Americans, you're producing approximately 4.5 pounds of trash per day, which amounts to approximately 1,600 pounds of trash per person per year. So pretty much it turns into a toxic mess. You got all those things breaking down. It will go seep into our water, it's in the land, it's in the air. We gotta do something about that. The reality is some of the hard facts are 30% of what's in the landfill is paper products, 20% plastic, 20% also your, your food items that are breaking down as well. We have to do something about it. These are all items that can be recycled, right Paul? That's right, and we're gonna be featuring Resource, which is an organization that helps to keep construction and deconstruction materials out of landfill, which can be about 30 to 40% of the trash that goes into a landfill. That's incredible. Once again, we can reduce this waste, and they have found a way, it sounds like. If you go to colorado.gov, you will look at some of the statistics. Up to 2013, there was over 7 million tons of trash that accumulated. we got to put an end to this. People got to learn to recycle, live more sustainably, right, Paul? That's right. So let's go check out Resource and see what kind of good stuff they're doing over there. That sounds good, Paul. Let's go, man. Guys, here we are, resources like to be here. You can tell, Reclaim Building Materials is a busy street. They call it the Recycle Row, if I'm not mistaken. What makes this place so great, resource, they facilitate the reuse of construction materials through their donation and resale program. What do you think, Paul? Yeah, that's right, Jake. So, resource plays an integral role in supporting green practices here cool. in the Boulder area through private donations, through their deconstruction services. And that's important because you know, conserves natural resources and you're also diverting materials from the landfill. Yeah, that's phenomenal. We're gonna find out how they're keeping four million pounds of trash out of our landfills yearly. What I'm gonna go to is talk to our, the senior manager here, Brandon Hill, find out all about that. What are you gonna do, Paul? I'm gonna go to the donation area and find out how that works, see what kind of materials people are donating, see what they accept and do not accept, and just see how a resource works. Cool, let's check it out, guys. Okay guys, here we are, we're at Resource Inside. Got a chance to talk to Brandon Hill. He's a senior manager here at Resource. Thank you, Brandon, for meeting us and talking with us. Pleasure to have you, Jake. Uh, once again, we're very uh, happy to be here and be part of uh, the interview with Resource. We want to know why, I want to get to the point, why is it through this deconstruction program you have, the donation program, you're having such an impact. We know you guys are taking in probably four million um, pounds of C and D materials. How much of an impact is that? I mean, and how does the process work? Well, you know, so it's huge. So, I mean, you mentioned that you were at the landfill this morning. Um, about 30% in Boulder County is construction debris, and that's about 250 million pounds a year. So really what this is all about is um, identifying an area that we can make an impact and then really making it happen. Um, so with our deconstruction program that you mentioned, uh, we have houses that are coming down around Boulder, and what we really try to do is um, educate contractors and homeowners that um, not only are you doing the right thing, but it's also an economical choice. Okay. So instead of paying money to have your contractor haul your materials to the landfill and paying a waste disposal fee, you can actually bring that material here, repurpose it, uh, spend no money, and actually get a tax deduction for it. So really it's a win-win-win when you present it that way, and we find that that's what really resonates most with people is both doing the right thing and also making financial sense to do the right thing. Excellent. And you guys will even actually go pick up these items for them. We just met Ben on a pickup, so that's something you do regularly for anybody who calls in. How's that work? Correct. So, you know, we'll meet with contractors before their project starts and kind of identify everything in the house that can be repurposed. Okay. Uh, we'll generate a list for them. That's a free service. And then as they go about pulling the material out of the house, they'll stage it for us and we have free hauling. So we'll actually come to your house, load it up, bring it back over to our yard free of charge. Right. Excellent. Now you're telling us so much about what you're doing, that's phenomenal. Uh, we want to get a tour of the place. Um, I see here in the background we have a tool library. How is it that that helps with a sustainable society? What's have to do with that? So um, really with the tool library, you're not talking about quantifiable landfill diversion, but what you are getting with that is empowering people who are on a budget to really make full use of the materials that are here at Resource. So, you know, for example, you find some awesome hardwood floor out there, but you're saying to yourself, I don't have a nail gun, I don't have an air compressor. Here's right. a way you can get that for just a couple dollars a day to take that home and do that project. So you're still able to use that reclaimed material and you're able to do it on a budget rather than going out and spending 
spending $500, for example, on tools that you might use one time. That's phenomenal. Well, we'd love to get a tour. Can you show us around? Definitely. All right, let's, let's go. go. Check it out. All right, so we're here at Donations. We're here with Shay. He's the donation attendant today. All right, so Shay, tell us how the donation area works here. Yeah, so um, people drive through our gate and they just pull up to here to our donation lane. Uh, and whoever is working the, the donation area will check out to see what they have to offer. Right. Um, by and large, we, we take a lot of things here. Um, generally, it's building materials, so like cabinets, plywood, um, sinks, piping, ventilation stuff, uh, tile, preferably new, stuff yeah. that doesn't still have the uh, cement still on it. Right. Um, and a lot of other different items. So a lot of things, anything building related or anything that you could reuse from your house or exactly, uh, your yeah. landscaping, whatever. Yeah, generally, yes. Okay, um, things we don't necessarily take are um, hazardous materials. So in that category, we have uh, light bulbs only because we don't have a safe way of recycling so here. So compact fluorescents and, and Correct. tubes, anything with the mercury inside it. Correct. Yeah. Uh, we also don't take liquids. Um, so like um, any kind of chemicals yeah, or yeah, any type so. of chem chemicals, uh, any compounds used for setting tiles, yep. for um, cleaning things up, right. caulking that's used we don't take. Okay. Uh, we generally ex we only accept the stuff that's brand new out of the box. In, gotcha. in that case. All right. So what are some alternatives for people if they come to the donation area and it's something that you're not going to accept? Where where can you send them or what can they do with those items? So depending on what they have, uh, there's a couple different options. If they brought in electronics, there is the Center for Hard to Recycle Materials that's just right next door. They will uh, gladly accept those as well. Oh, um, fantastic. Uh, refrigerators that are broken, mm -hmm. um, any type of appliances that are broken mm -hmm. that we can't necessarily take here, they can also go over there, especially refrigerators because they have the Freon, and we don't have a way to recycle the Freon here, but Charm does. And so Charm, that's uh, part of EcoCycle, right? And, and they share the, the site with, with uh, resource. Correct, they're just on, they're on uh, the other side of our warehouse, we're oh, on the same lot, so they don't even have to drive down to or any farther than they already yeah. have. So if they're here, you just send them right over, right next door, and they can Correct. take care of that stuff. Um, and right. Now, in terms of hazardous materials, say like paints or like the other, other items that we previously mentioned, like oils and whatnot, right. those that would have to go to the uh, hazardous management, I believe is the name of the place. It is on 63rd Avenue. It's just down the road from us is like maybe two miles down the road. Oh yeah, from the us. hazardous materials facility. Yes, the hazardous materials right facility. Right by the um, Boulder Recycling Center. Correct. All right. That's great. the place to take everything, uh, the hazardous stuff that we can. Cool. Cool. Well, yeah, let's take a look and uh, see some of the items that people have already donated today. Sure. So looks like we got some conduit piping in here. So looks like it's almost brand new. Brand new box. or uh, lightly used. Lightly yeah. used in the box. Yeah. A couple bifold uh, screen doors. Some for shutters, we got some lighting. Some extra screen materials. Brand for new. Look at that. Windows. This is still brand new. This yep. is nice. Also got light in here, but unfortunately, it looks like someone decided that we could use the bulbs as well. Those may be LEDs, possibly, potentially LEDs. Yeah, I think. Yeah, those are LEDs. So those would be okay then. Those would be fine. Yeah, or incandescents if they happens to slip through. Yeah. All right, what else do we got? Looks like a cabinet set. Yeah, I got we a got nice a cabinet set here. Countertop. Some countertop with that. Oh, yeah. We don't want back here. How long are they? Bunch of All right, we got some sheet goods here. There's MDF. A bunch of doors that just door. came in. So, yeah, we'll it. as you can see, we've got a lot of different stuff here. And then we also take tools as well. So vacuum, heat lockers, both electric and, and gas powered. Um, Got a couple engines in there, lawnmowers. From time to time, we get those as well. All right, fantastic. A lot of nice reusable stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, so the tools they can either get sold or potentially go into the tool library, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. To, uh, generally, we'll we'll check to see if the tools will work. Um, if they do work, we'll try to resell them at mm -hmm. a at a fraction of the cost, especially for something like a uh, gas powered one. Those right. are very very expensive. Right. And they're very popular around here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's good for people to be able to reuse it if it's, you know, in good condition. Absolutely. You don't have to go out and buy, buy a new one and, and uh, save a lot of money too. Exactly. All right, Shay. Well, uh, thanks a lot for showing us the donation area. And awesome. thanks for uh, 
working at Resource and being a part of uh, Mother Nature the Warriors. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, guys, we're starting the, uh, the tour with Brandon right now, and, and this is what they call the showroom, Brandon. What, what's that about? Uh, so our showroom is kind of where we keep our higher end items, uh, things that need to be out of the elements, things like, you know, you can see a beautiful slab of granite right here. Cool. Um, there's cabinet sets, high end appliances. So cool. basically um, the higher end reclaimed materials that we have here, those will be positioned here out of the elements in our showroom. And you know, the thing here at Resources is that the inventory changes by the hour. Right. So like Lots you can come back in an hour, our donations are open um, for the full day. Things right. are coming in all day and they get processed cool. in. So um, really never a set inventory, constantly changing and we just kind of select what are the nicer items of the day and those will cool. end up on display here in the showroom. Excellent, that's great. Where's the, where are we off to next? We're... Let's head out to the warehouse. Cool, let's check it out. Guys, here we are in the warehouse with Brandon again. He's, he's continuing the tour. I'm seeing all kinds of items, random tiles, cabinets. So... Show us around, Brandon. What's this all about? Yeah, definitely. So um, again, inside here in the warehouse is all things that we like to keep out of the elements. So okay. just starting right here, we have a full hardware section. Everything from screws to nails to uh, electrical switch plate covers. Okay. Any little thing like that you could imagine will be found right here. Cool. And um, just beyond that, we have a quite full, the tile selection. Yeah, inside. a full section of tiles here. And um, this is really great if you're looking to do home improvement or if you're an artist that's interested in mosaics. We have a lot of people like that who come in and are really interested in our tiles. So you can see here all different styles, um, shapes, sizes, and colors. So it's part of that 30 or 40% of the CNA materials that goes in the landfill can be brought here. Easily and brought here, and yes, easily cool. brought here and reused. And um, we definitely have no problem finding people to make use of those. Perfect. Kind of over here on the right, you can see we have a, a bunch of racks that contain uh, cabinetry. cabinetry. So these are cabinets that are not part of a full set, but are okay. still perfectly reusable. So okay. if you need a couple cabinets for your garage or just to replace one that broke in your kitchen, cool. you can definitely find something like that here cool. as well. And these aren't as high as end with what's in the showroom, obviously. But... Correct. Okay. Correct. And so then, um, you know, moving on a little further here, um, over here, obviously, we've got wrap the around to where we appliance. have um, appliances. So this is where you can find something like a uh, reclaimed washer and dryer, uh, stoves, microwaves, vent hoods, uh, dishwashers, so any kind of household appliances you can Excellent. also find out here in our warehouse. What would you typically charge for something like this and what in comparison to new, what would that be? I mean, here's a perfect example right here. You have a uh, dryer that is priced at $45, okay. um, probably a retail sticker price of uh, in the $350 to $400 range. So quite a bargain, perfectly functionable. Uh, not in bad shape and uh, just a great deal for anybody who's looking for a dryer. That's really economical. Now when you get some of these stuff and say they don't function, can you recycle these stills? Do you guys do that? How's that work? We do, yeah. So if we're given an appliance that uh, is non-functional, okay. we are able to recycle the metal. Okay. Uh, here we always do prefer reuse over recycling, okay. but if it's the difference of someone taking their you know, dryer to the landfill, we'd be happy right. to recycle the metal for them as well. Excellent. Good stuff, man. What else we got around here? So um, just moving on to the last section here, uh, we have a full section of um, lighting right here okay. so you can see on these racks um, light fixtures exterior interior chandeliers um, any kind of lighting you would want to put in your house can be found right out here as well so you're really saving people a lot of money by having all these different items here I mean that's an that's just a phenomenal thing that you have that to a lot of people know about this I mean they're aware of resource you know, um, it's a lot bigger in Boulder City uh, than it is outside. We do have visitors that come from, you know, Crested Butte, Aspen, a couple guys from right. New Mexico that drive up to make big trips. Right. Um, primarily the clientele is here within Boulder, but it is growing and uh, you do get a lot of people from Denver here as well. Now what happens to other people coming to the materials that can't be recycled here? Do you them say go here, go there, give them options? Uh, yeah, you know, um, just by the nature of being in this business, we kind of know what can go where. Okay. So uh, if we, if there is something that comes through that we're not able to accept, we're always uh, doing our best to direct people to where they can recycle it. So if it's some kind of uh, hazardous material, we direct them over to uh, the household hazardous okay. uh, facility where they can recycle that. Or many things that we don't take can be accepted by EcoCycle here on our same lot. Um, okay. You know, metal recycling, uh, bikes, yoga mats, all that kind of stuff can be recycled just around the corner. So yeah, there can you tell us about that partnership? With with uh, EcoCycle and how that works, I mean, definitely. we definitely want to address because not only is resource here for the materials, construction materials, we also have another facility that works out of here, right? So this facility is called Recycle Row. So okay. you have resource here, which is uh, reuse, 
and okay. EcoCycle, which is recycling. So their facility is called Charm. Okay. They do hard to recycle materials. Cool. So something like a broken toilet, uh, the porcelain can be recycled there. They turn it into really? road base that's used right here in Colorado. Wow, okay. So that's a great uh, program as well. They can take broken refrigerators um, that can't be used for metal recycling because of the Freon. They have the means to actually drain the Freon out of those appliances okay. and dispose of them responsibly. Great. So another great organization. I would definitely encourage you guys to have a chat with them sometime as well to learn about what they do. We'll have to they do like electronics and things like that as well. Broken I mean, TVs, anything electrical, uh, okay. they can recycle there as well. I just want to make a point to people: there's definitely always an option for things, you know, places for these items that you think should go in the landfill, but they have a home for sure. So there's pretty much there's always a place for that 30 or 40 percent of that CMD. There's a use for a majority of it. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about a fraction of a percent of things that literally have to go to the landfill. Okay. Um, when you're talking about, uh, you know, chemicals and things like that, those cannot be reused, obviously, but almost everything, particularly if there's a creative individual out there, can be right. reused and repurposed. Very cool. Now, one more question, and we should check out the yard, definitely. Um, where, are, where else can they go? Are there places like Resource in the country, in, in Colorado? Are they? There are, yeah. Um, I think the big name that comes to mind would be uh, Habitat for Humanities Restore. That's a nationwide okay. program where they have stores that uh, run a similar operation. Okay. Um, I have heard of a couple things in San Francisco, okay. uh, something in Seattle, and something up in Montana, but it is a very new concept. So you guys are kind of pioneers that way. Not many people are doing this. And you would be surprised, even in places like big cities, Washington, D.C., New York City, there's not something like this out there. So it's really a model that we're hoping other people can see and uh, latch onto and kind of get that same impact we're getting right here in Boulder across the entire country. That's phenomenal. You guys are definitely warriors. Let's go check out the yard. I'd love to see it. Definitely. Cool. Here we are in the yard. The yard is even more involved. There's a lot more spaces and it looks like separation of items here. So how does that work, Brian? I see some kind of landscape materials here. Definitely. So right now we're in our landscaping section. Uh, so okay. again, we're talking about all materials that have been reclaimed uh, from properties that are being remodeled or houses that are coming down. So you can see right here, you know, there's some beautiful barrel tiles, kind of wow. that CU style uh, roofing Sweet. material that's out here. Um, some more roofing here. And What's then- something uh, like this run if you're gonna buy this? Like I mean, About 50 cents a tile. 50 cents a tile. Yeah. And um, then over here we have all kinds of landscaping rocks. So um, looking at some flagstone remnants here, some concrete blocks, and then uh, quite a bit more flagstone just over kind here. Of remnants, but they definitely can be used. Once again, people come here, once again, not for their intended use sometimes, but for our projects, things of that nature. Th right? There'll be people that will come here every day just to kind of get their creativity flowing and they'll pick something out like, oh, this is going to be perfect for that patio I'm looking to do outside. Um, yeah, not really planning to do that, but being right. inspired once they do see what's available cool. here. And once again, you guys have relationships with some contractors around the area and they can bring in large sums of Definitely, items, and uh, you know, it's a great it's a great service for contractors to offer as well. Um, homeowners love to hear that their material is going to be reused and not just taken to the landfill. So there are a lot of contractors again who uh, like to repurpose, and also right. it makes good business sense to be involved in this. Cool. Looks like you guys get jacuzzis, huh? jacuzzi <laughs> tubs, bath tubs, <laughs> seed spreaders, um, you name it. Almost any kind of building materials you can find out here in our yard. You know, do you ever find yourself wanting to buy items out here? Or? Is everything that like suits your fancy occasion? All of you should see my apartment. It's entirely <laughs> resourced. So yes, um, most of the employees that work here as well, they, they do love to shop here. I know that well. I yes. was an employee. Well, thank you very much, Brandon, for showing us around. Obviously, it goes on forever. Maybe what we'll try to do is talk to some of the patrons that are walking around and shopping here and see what they're to what interests them and what suits their fancy. So once again, Brandon. Appreciate you coming out, man. You guys yeah. keep on doing the good fight. Yeah, thank you for being on Mother Nature Warriors on our web series. Check us out. Uh, this is the second one. And, uh, Thank you again for being a warrior and part of Resource. Thanks a lot, my pleasure. Cheers. All right, everyone, here we are in the yard at Resource, and we're here with a regular Resource customer. His name is Mitch. So, Mitch, uh, why do you come to Resource? What do you do with the items, and uh, what kind of good stuff do you find here? Well, uh, I'm an artist uh, full time, and uh, I do a lot of recycled found object art. Oh, so I'm fantastic. always kind of just hunting the grounds for pieces of metal. I, I do a lot of welding. So I might find something that has a little character, a little rust, a little patina. Mm -hmm. You know, the bolts are always good. Uh, things that have a little bit of color still left on them from their past life, if I'm incorporating a very good piece of art, yeah. is always good. Uh, and sometimes I'm just looking for, you know, I don't even know. Something, something that has unique. Yeah, something, different. Yeah. something that has an interesting shape. Yeah. You know, like even like the sawtooth of this, if it was a bigger, you know, bigger thing, something on the chain or something. Okay. That, 
you know, take it out of context. You know, it might be something that had a, a past life or something else, but I'm going to incorporate it in a piece of art. Right, right. So a lot of people are coming here. They're they're going to use the item for its intended purpose, which you probably do at and times. I, and, and I've then, done that. I just yeah. finished my basement. I did the whole basement out of recycled wood. All a lot from of, resource. All from resource. Wow. A lot of barn wood. I bought a toilet here. I bought the Fantastic. sink. I bought the faucet. Hmm. A lot of wood that was reclaimed from fencing and barn wood. Yeah. Whitewashed it, cleaned it up. It's beautiful. Wow. I mean, it's you know you get a lot of bang for your buck. You're doing yep. a great thing for the economy yep. and for the ecology because yep. you know you're recycling stuff that would have gone to the landfill. Right, and conserving the resources that go into making these items. Absolutely. The mining, the energy that goes into making it. So. Absolutely. And I get yeah. to hang out with guys like you on a yeah. beautiful day in Boulder. Yeah, yeah. So what better can it be? Absolutely. All right. Then so, you know, my favorite aisles are kind of the metal aisles, but I pretty much walk every aisle. Uh, I'm looking for pieces of wood. We've got, you know, the resources kind of separated into areas of like furniture, wood scrap, uh, you know, toilets, porcelain, metal cabinets, yeah. all sorts of things. So a lot of the stuff is stuff I can use either by cutting it apart and you know rewelding it, remaking it. Uh, I love patina steel. So old okay. drums. You guys had a series of old drums that I cut right. apart, and they had some great patina on that I can't you know really uh, you know emulate. So. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you coming and, and being a Mother Nature's warrior, Mitch. And uh, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate, appreciate it. Thanks, it. Paul. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Paul. Let me help you with that. Let's go do a pickup with Ben. All right, yeah. He just took off. Let's cool. go. All right. Guys, how are you? We're here at a location where Ben Weiss has worked and done a deconstruction assessment. Uh, ben is the head of... De deconstruction and acquisitions. Okay. For our resource. Excellent. We're going to talk with him. He's actually picked out these items here and we want to know a little bit about it, what the process goes into it from the phone call from these people to picking up the items. How, how does it work, Ben? So yeah, there's a, there's a couple ways it works. Um, you know, we work mainly with contractors and just, you know, residents as well. Um, this was a contractor pickup, so I had a contractor call us, let us know that they're doing a, a deconstruction. We're actually out in Broomfield, so they don't actually fall uh, within the walls of Boulder City where they have a certain percentage that needs to be diverted. So these guys are actually donating just out of kind of the goodwill of, of wanting to, to recycle as opposed to kind of being bound by it um, since okay. they are contractors. So yeah, they just call me, they kind of let me know what they have, what they're taking out. This today is a kitchen set with some appliances, uh, microwave oven, dishwasher, you can kind of see the, the, cool. whole, the whole thing. So, you know, these are the kind of things we love to get, the full sets that come out. Um, you know, it's really, it's really good for us because we can uh, bring them in, sell it as a unit as opposed to kind of piece it together and someone can come in and get a basically new, new kitchen set, give it a second life, keep it on the landfill. Very cool. So tell us a little about what how did, what are the policies as far as percentages of deconstruction so and you have to donate portions of it. How does that Boulder work? Boulder City has a law that if you have a full deconstruction of the house, it's the whole thing is coming down, 65% okay. of that waste has to be diverted from the landfill. Okay. Um, so what we can do, one of the things that we offer is we write these deconstruction plans for Boulder City, kind of planning out how you'll get to that weight based off structural weight and material weight of what we can divert, what can be recycled, where it can go, concrete, lumber, that kind of stuff as well. So within Boulder City, Boulder City actually is, is pretty cool. They're uh, kind of on the forefront, I would say, with, with their laws that kind of uh, require the, the, the uh, diversion. Okay. Boulder County as a, a whole county does not have that law. So most of the stuff that we do in Boulder County is actually kind of just people, you know, who want to cycle as opposed to, you know, that they're bound by it. So they're only bound by in the in, city in of the Boulder. City Boulder, correct. Okay. And at the minimum of 65%, a lot of times contractors will try and get up to almost 85. So obviously there's a lot more items that come out of here that we can't take. Right. So resource. and that's that go? and that that so the the 65% only comes on a full decon, so a full knockdown. This just having just the kitchen comes out. There's no real no percentage numbers of what you have to divert. Um, it's only when the whole house is coming down. Right. So a lot of the other stuff, when you're looking at that 65%, about, you know, really what we pick up is only maybe about one or 2% of actual claimed goods. The rest of that's gonna be a lot of concrete, uh, concrete recyclers used in Denver, lumber recycling um, used either through us or Western. We can take anything that's denailed. Um, anything that's nailed, you can kind of go into a wood chipper and get uh, the, you know, the nails and stuff you know, magnet out. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, a lot of the, a lot of that heavier weight is going to be from the actual foundation of the home being right. reused in a new foundation, um, 
and you know that, that kind of stuff. So cool. A lot of people know about resources. They're constantly calling you. Is you have yeah, to say we, no to people? Man, or no, what? I, yeah, we actually we have to say no quite a bit. It, you know, it's one of the tougher things. It's, you know, the, the misconception of being a junk hauling company versus a reuse company. Right. Um, you know, we don't just come and take away stuff that we, we can't actually put into reuse. You know, we want to divert as much as we can, but there's a certain way we do it. Um, we want to make sure that we're not just taking trash to throw, right. that we're later going to throw away. It's got to have some resale It's got to have some man. resale value to it. So, you know, my schedule is pretty much always full. It's, it's always booking about a week out. So there's a lot of people that but like to use us and know about us, which is pretty cool. We started. Cool, man. I'm, I'm psyched to be here to help you and to see what you picked out. Yeah. And uh, we'd love to help you load it up into the yeah. truck and so get really back to the pretty, resource. Pretty easy. We'll just, you know, we'll grab the dolly out of here and, cool. uh, and get it get it rolling out. Yeah. Cool guys, uh, we just finished loading the truck. We talked to Becky about how she uh, got in touch with Resource. So Ben, what's the deal when this uh, stuff, these items go back? What goes down? So uh, I'll bring it back. You guys, see we got a pretty, pretty full load right now. I'll bring it back to the yard, kind of bring it through our donation lane. Um, I have a little area that I actually specifically use for our trucks, and uh, bring it in. We'll, we'll pull up a pallet with uh, one of the forklifts, cool. get it unloaded onto a pallet, kind of assess if it's going to go in the showroom, the yard, the warehouse. Kind of where we want want to stage it. We definitely are going to want to stage it together. Like I mentioned, it's a good cool set. Yeah, so uh, mm -hmm. so we'll stage it somewhere and kind of get the individual pieces. The appliances will sell on their own, and the doors will sell on their own. But the the uh, cabinets will will get somewhere together and kind of make it look like a a little bit like Center kind of how, how it would look in the kitchen. And yeah. uh, and you know hopefully get it uh, get it out of here pretty quick. Awesome. Cool, man. So uh, when you when you get to the yard, do you have to document everything? Do you yeah, absolutely. So there is uh, there is documentation for all the pickups we do for not just the CRC, but for the city as well. Okay. So uh, we report all of our numbers, all the waste diversion, all the weights that we do. Got it. Um, there is also uh, incentive for the homeowners. It is a tax donation. Since we are a nonprofit, they do get a tax donation for Fantastic. for uh, donating. So that's also part of the. Uh, the process I'll get a tax donation receipt um, input it with the inventory into our computer and email that over to the homeowner All right. and uh, that way they can submit it next to tax season. Tax season. Excellent. Fantastic. Ben, thank you for being a warrior. Absolutely. Being a part of the thank you guys for coming out yeah, and, 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 and coming with me on the yeah, pickup and seeing, uh, seeing what we do. I appreciate cool. it. We're going to meet you back at resource. We might even help you unload some of this stuff. See if nice. We can find some cool there stuff. we go. That's what I'm talking right. about. Cool. Awesome. Guys, thank you for joining us again for another episode of Mother Nature Warriors. Right, Paul? It's been a great day here at Resource. Yeah, yeah. It's been awesome seeing how things work here and the impact they're having in the Boulder community by diverting those materials from the landfill and also giving these items a second life uh, and, and saving people money at the same time. Yeah, facilitating, facilitating that reuse of that material is huge. And people just come on down to 6400 Arapaho and see what it's all about people will help you out and uh, you'll be doing something great for our environment so thank you again yeah absolutely and until next episode thanks for being a mother nature's warrior yeah guys take care thank you